Here's to the crazy ones. The misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers. If scientists have a sales pitch, that will be your presentation. Whether you like it or not, you realize it or not, we are all selling something. Even this video is selling. We should all take a coffee together as a PhD and learn from each other. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community for you as PhD students to get motivation, peer support, and practical tips during your PhD. Today, I like to talk about presentation. Everyone is just a line on the conference booklet until you get to that room and realize how good the talk is. We may not see this future, but they will. And our job is to help them make something of it. Thank you very much. Bravo. We're here. Today, I want to tease out how does that mean to be that phenomenal speaker? What sets you apart from other participants? I have spent a lot of time mesmerizing after a good talk, after someone given a lecture. My experience being six years of postdoc and PhD, and I have traveled quite a bit to many conferences, I boil down to five different ways you can improve your introduction of your presentation. But of course, you must have good data. So, uh, how's research going? <gasps> Don't you know you're never supposed to ask a grad student that question? It's just rude. You must have clear science, and that's something I can't help you with PhD coffee time. That's something your PI needs to help you with. But today, I hope to inspire you to think of your intro a little differently, because you're going to give up your opportunity by just giving bullet point. Think about how it would be like if you walk in and have something that wows the audience. One of my favorite is the time-lapse movie. If you are in life sciences, I really encourage you to try to document the process that you are looking at in a time-lapse movie. Regardless, this is for your data collection or not, I think it really captivate the audience and make a good point. Biology is so complex. I mesmerize when someone have a time-lapse movie of a biological development process. And if you are in other sector, video is a great way to start a talk. One talk that I was in in material science, they have a slow motion movie of something fracturing, captivate the audience attention. Very interesting approach. Analogy. Now, any scientist wishing to understand, practice, and master clinical pharmacology must be able to see both the forest and the trees. Our brain is lazy and we don't like to remember fact. The Cas9 protein is like a pair of scissors. Protein component called Cas9 that is uh, represented on this slide as scissors. Immediately, you are aware that this is about cutting the DNA. This protein Cas9 has uh, the ability to recognize that specifically a certain sequence on on the DNA, a certain sequence of interest, as the ability to cleave the DNA. And if you are from social science, story is always the best way to engage your audience. When I was nine years old, I went off to summer camp for the first time, and my mother packed me a suitcase full of books, which to me seemed like a perfectly natural thing to do, because in my family, reading was the primary group activity. I had a great story recently, uh, I love telling it, of a little girl who was uh, in a drawing lesson. She was six and she was at the back drawing and the, and the girl said, I'm drawing a picture of God. And the teacher said, but nobody knows what God looks like. And the girl said, they will in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> when I defended my PhD thesis, it was about multi-factor stress level of marine organism in the environment. That day I was wearing a pair of high heel, really tall. Funny story, why it is so important to evaluate multiple stress. That's because when you try on a pair of heels, you think you can manage the height without your backpack, without having to chase the bus. That morning, when I was running to my thesis defense, I was wearing this pair of stiletto as a Hong Konger even. I wasn't late, but there was a bus and I wanted to run. I realized I couldn't because I was wearing a stupid pair of stiletto. So that was the funny moment moment and everyone immediately recognized how it might be really important biologically when you have multiple levels of stress. Lastly, 
Can you hear me okay? A lot of questions people can ask. My voice is changing the air pressure where you sit by just a few billionths of the atmospheric level. Yet we take it for granted that your ears can capture that infinitesimal signal and use it to signal to the brain the full range of auditory experiences: the human voice, music, the natural world. How does your do that? So I hope by the end of this video, you're going to come up with your own video, your own question, your own analogy, and your own story when you are introducing your science. This is the little extra work that sets you apart from all the other speaker in the conference. I only given you four tips, and I said I will give five. The last tip is don't forget your conference is only good if everyone remember who you are, where you come from, and how to connect with you. Conference is not just about you giving a good talk and be proud of it. It's about you going out there, being your businessman, It's like a sales talk for science. You are there to represent your home country. Your institution, your PI, yourself to attract collaborators, funding, and future work opportunity. So I would definitely start the talk with a Twitter QR code by simply googling QR code generator. You can put any link, Twitter handle, ResearchGate, so that people can look up your paper right away. Imagine if you are in the theater and someone is sitting in the back, and they can already scan your QR code and go directly to where you are. And of course, you can put your Twitter handle by at And Twitter symbol that will do the job. I think if you are in a poster, that QR code is going to、um, to make a statement of how creative you are. In my PhD training, because I come from Hong Kong and we have a ton of collaborator from everywhere, all over the planet. The first slide before the science even start, we will talk about where we are, what are the facilities we have, and pictures of the lab, and we welcome people to connect and come visit. That's the culture we are coming from. <laughs> Maybe more of a marine scientist. Background. I notice it's different culture in medical science. Maybe they are more patient data. For example, they don't want to share. But I think there is a line that you have to draw to be friendly and to be available. It make it easy for people to connect with you and work with you in the future. I found my own postdoc from conference because I make the effort to connect with my PI. My opportunity only opens up two years later, but the seed was planted back in the conference. I hope this video inspire you to really think about how you introduce your work, and I hope you will find the joy of creating a unique presentation from my sharing today. And stay tuned for the next two videos that are equally important. For you, I will cover the technical part of how you can immediately enhance your PowerPoint presentation, as well as how to work the room, because it's all it matters is to speak to the right people, meeting the right person. And what if we are really shy? So stay tuned for that, and thank you for watching, and I'll see you the next time. If you're learning something today, please make sure to hit the like button so that it really will help me reach more PhD students out there. Comment below. Do you use already some of these tips? And share this with anyone that you're working with so that everyone can progress a little bit more as a scientist. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you the next time.